Next from Chicago, we speak with Dr. Brent Clark of the Illinois Association of School Administrators and Roger Eddy with the Illinois Association of School Boards about the proposed Vision 2020 Education Initiative and the struggles schools face putting together a budget without knowing the long-term state budget. This runs about 15 minutes. Dr. Brian Clark and Roger Eddy, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel as we are here at the Conference of the Illinois Association of School Boards. You've just recently announced Vision 2020. It's a new plan that, as I understand, is going to make significant changes in the educational landscape, we might say. And you were both very much involved in putting that together, along with some other groups. But can you give us a brief synopsis of what it is and, and why do you feel it's necessary? When you look at Illinois over the last few years, you'll see that we've had a lot of uh, different reform measures that's been, that have been focused on education. And, but when you really look at it as a whole, there's really not been a coherent plan to move public education forward. So we, we surveyed our members and what we found out is that there's a high degree of overregulation, huge inequalities and, and severe underfunding. So you can't just point out the problems. I think you have to come up with some solutions and Vision 2020 is an attempt to come up with a package of solutions that range into four different areas. And what, what would those four areas be? Well, one is highly effective educators. We believe that that's one of the pillars for the future of public education is to support the fact we need highly effective educators. 21st century uh, learning is pillar number two. Uh, we obviously think that uh, school districts need to uh, educate the whole child, uh, that we have to make sure that technology is a, a major part of how we educate our children uh, into the future. We also think that there should be shared accountability. That's the third pillar, uh, differentiated accountability model, but uh, uh, making sure that the locally and at the state level and for all stakeholders that there is some accountability. And lastly, but not least, is we, we need to strive uh, to have an equitable and adequate funding system for Illinois schools. We'd like to see it uh, be based on an evidence-based outcomes model uh, and uh, you know those four pillars we think uh, uh, should form the, the, the foundation as we move forward and we consider public policies for public education. So a couple of things uh, first of all on the on the planning vision 2020 we know what 2020 means uh, as far as site but I think also this represents what a goal of doing this by the year 2020? Yeah, it's a play on two things. Seeing clearly 2020, but also recognizing that it does take time to implement, pass and implement these types of ideas through the General Assembly and across school districts in Illinois. So giving ourselves probably a four to six year window to get this package of, of uh, measures put in place. Let me pursue just one of this. So one of the one of the problems then as the head of the administrators, I mean, we've talked before on camera, off camera, that. The, the Roger used to be involved heavily with as a state lawmaker in putting together the budget. The budget would be passed at the end of May, and so schools wouldn't know how much money they were going to get until May when they had to be making maybe hiring decisions in March or April and kind of guessing how much they would get. We said that we're going to give $6,100 per pupil as a foundation and now we're only paying 89% of that foundation, which kind of defeats the point of having a foundation if you're not going to live up to it. So I wanted to say that for the viewers to say, one, you're both involved, uh, you both bring different histories of your uh, life experiences to play with this, and how much as administrators is it a problem when you don't know not only how much money are you going to have six months from now, but you don't know the following year how much money you're going to get? Well, it's, it's planning with, with, with blindness, and, and you're making personnel and programmatic cuts, uh, and you're dealing with people's lives, and you're doing it not knowing where your funding and your revenue streams are coming from. So part of this plan in equitable and adequate funding calls for what we call year-ahead budgeting, where we would have estimates of what the second year budgeting would be so we would know coming into those years ahead of that final number what the best estimates would be in that year ahead budgeting plan so that we could at least make those types of decisions and even have those critical discussions around personnel decisions, programmatic placement uh, with some knowledge instead of being totally blind when we make the cuts. And Roger, <clears throat> again, you, you with your background in budgeting, put together the state budget, you and I know, I mean me as a reporter, we're all waiting on the last day for the budget to come down and fall on someone's desk and then you vote on it. Now you would know because you had been one of the budgeteers, but 
Uh, how doable do you think that is within the legislature and to what extent would lawmakers be sensitive to this being a problem? I mean, as I hear it, it seems to make a lot of sense. How can you plan ahead if you don't know how much money you're going to have? Well, I think they'll be sensitive to it. I think they have been sensitive to the technical issues related to personnel uh, uh, reductions in force that have to take place prior to us knowing those numbers. And, and it's workable. Uh, General Assembly is a two-year General Assembly. The 99th General Assembly is just about to get started. In the first year of that, if you could do the look-ahead budgeting, what you're really doing is those individuals who were elected in that first year are kind of making a commitment for the second year. I don't think you can do it into a newly elected House uh, You know, uh, in, in those years be staggered, but I think you can do it in the first year and make that commitment. Uh, you know, things happen. There, there are catastrophes that occur. There, there are recessions that occur, and we have to work together through those types of things. But, but I think for the sake of consistency and stabilized uh, decision making for our schools, we, we need to approach a two-year cycle in some way. Now, on the uh, other accountability, w to what extent would you, as educators, uh, school leaders be accountable and what does that mean by accountable does that mean that we're going to guarantee everyone is at a reading and writing at a certain level does i'm not sure what what is the accountability factor well we tried that once with no child left behind we said every child was going to be uh, achieving at a certain level by a certain date uh, in time what we really mean is that while assessment is important, and it is, uh, educators understand the importance of assessment, it, it's to instruct teaching and learning. Uh, it's not necessarily to compare, to rate, and compete between school districts. So we think assessment should be part of an accountability system that's broader, that takes into account uh, differentiated items, multi-measures uh, uh, for the accountability. We think everyone should be held accountable. Uh, we think administrators, teachers, board members, community, uh, everyone should be accountable, including the General Assembly, the governor's office, and uh, hopefully we can build a model together that shares that responsibility. Are, are there any teeth in this to enforce accountability? Well, yeah, there, there is. And at the very end of the game here, we're talking about that accountability to include removal of uh, folks uh, that are responsible for education from those responsibility uh, positions if uh, there's not continued improvement and there isn't, uh, there isn't a change. So everybody has skin in the game with this. Now, what we really need to do uh, is to make sure that our communities hold us responsible and they hold everyone involved in this, all stakeholders, responsible. Uh, and Brent, I know we had talked in the past, one of the things that a lot of schools, I think teachers, administrators, uh, suffer from reform fatigue, that oh, everyone's yeah. throwing a yeah. new idea at them every six months yeah. about how things should be done. Will this be welcomed, do you think, by Illinois? And let me make, uh, maybe for uh, more for our viewer standpoint, I, Illinois might be compared to a house in which You've had 50 different people over a variety of yeah, years yeah. saying this is what the windows ought to look like, this is what the extra room ought to look like. So you get this hodgepodge. Is this an effort for the educational establishment, and it's not just you two, it's a broad diversity of groups, to say, why don't we come up with our own blueprint so that when it's built, the house will look as we think it ought to look? Pretty good description of Vision 2020. The idea here is to look, you know, public educators are not afraid of account accountability, high standards, but we need to clean the clutter out of our systems. We need to put some decent funding in place and give these schools a chance to run and, and serve kids and, and be responsive to taxpayers. We have just we have just overloaded the system, and it needs to be a, we need to punch the reset button, come in with a nice clean plan that's comprehensive, which we believe this is, and we think this will move us forward if we can get some uh, support behind it. We could go on and on, and I'd like to do this again at length, but let me, Roger, uh, you were elected official, again, member of the law, legislature for a number of years. What are your thoughts relative to Governor-elect Rauner coming in as you're trying to make these changes? He said one of his principal four achievements he wants to do, rebuild the economy, but rebuild education. Is that helpful to have a new governor, do you think, especially one that's given voice to helping, uh, trying to fix uh, education in Illinois? 
Well, let me you know be clear about it. This started two years ago, so it wasn't predicated or planned on, on anyone being elected or not elected. But uh, I think it's an opportunity. I, uh, Mr. Rauner has always uh, been involved in education, uh, and he has a passion for it. Uh, he's asking folks uh, to provide input, and we're happy to do that. Uh, we need to work with whomever uh, is in the governor's office and whomever is in the General Assembly together in a collaborative manner to provide some answers for our school district. So we're very hopeful. Uh, given the uh, governor-elect's background and, and passion for education, uh, I don't think you can question his uh, commitment uh, in, in terms of uh, reform efforts. Uh, we need to sit down and talk about what we can do together for the children of this state. Uh, as we tape this, uh, Governor Edgar just spoke at the conference, and uh, he was kind of saying the good news is G Governor-elect Rauner is very interested in education, and the bad news is he's very interested in education, that he might have some strong ideas, too. I'll let that, uh, you don't have to respond to it necessarily. You'll be no, working you with know, him. No, I think I would respond. I think we're, we're, we're open to working with, with, with Mr. Rauner. Uh, you know, when you get someone that's been successful in his life, as he has, he clearly is a good, you know, some, been some bright ideas, done well, and uh, he's articulate. Uh, we look forward to the chance to sit down and work to, to move the whole state forward. I think, I think the, you know, the opportunity is great right now, and we want to we step into that. Let me close out with this. Uh, often we hear as taxpayers uh, over the years, it seemed like every time we hear about improving education, it was always we need more money, we need more money. Not to say that you're not going to be asking for more money. As we said, we're under funding the foundation level now. But I'm curious, in your own mind, where you work on a day by day, is, is there some low-hanging fruit where if you could say, you know, if you would just bend these rules or get rid of these rules and unshackle me, we could accomplish a lot of things that oh, yeah. wouldn't necessarily cost us a lot of money. Well, yeah. I think that's accurate. And not only that, uh, we're talking about mandates and you're talking about usurping local control, but there are components of this plan that don't depend on money at all. They depend on changing, uh, you know, the way we do things and, and taking advantage of technology and taking uh, uh, advantage of efficiencies that we believe that are there. So uh, it's, it's not all about money. It really isn't. Uh, it, it's about doing things a little bit smarter in some cases, but, but also, you know, it, uh, at some point or another, uh, we're going to have to have the discussion about equity because, as you mentioned, um, uh, adequacy and equity uh, are important. And when you're funding the foundation level at uh, 89 percent uh, and you're going to try to move toward best practice, uh, you're probably going to have to look at it. But this plan has several components that don't require funding. Absolutely. I mean, you can walk through the plan almost every section. Something in each pillar is virtually free. Something in each pillar probably costs some money. But there's a good blend of short-term, intermediate, and long-term goals, some free, some small costs, some big costs, but it's a, it's, a, it's a good package. Well, gentlemen, I know you're going to make a, a more formal announcement, uh, but maybe we can do a sit down together with you again uh, just before the legislature comes back in and get a little more time and get in a little more details at that point. Great. Thank you. Happy to. Thanks. You're watching the Illinois Channel an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 